Welcome to another episode of Unlocking the Word. I'm your host, Candy McKee, and today we are going to be reading out of Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. And I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation, but whatever translation you prefer is just fine. So let's get started. And just with like any other study, we're going to begin with prayer. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for another opportunity to be able to come together to study your word. Lord, will you speak to our hearts and show us what it is that you want us to hear and for what you want us to know. We thank you for showing that through your word so that way we can grow in you and get to know you better, but also, Lord, to do what we have to do in our lives to make the changes that need to be made. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, let's read from Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? In the name of God I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send him, send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep side hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to a nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there, fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs, and the crowds began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed at what he had told them. Now let's begin asking the questions that we need to ask when we are doing a study of God's Word. And we will start with who. Who is mentioned? Who are the characters that are being discussed in this passage? Now let's ask when and where. When and where is this all taking place? What? What is being told to us? What story is being explained? Why? Why is this happening? And why are we being told this story? And our final question, how? How is this being told to us? 
or how is this being demonstrated to us? And don't forget to look for repeated words, commands, or questions. Now looking over all the questions that you've answered, go back over the passage and look for the scripture verse that stood out to you the most. Write that down. answer some of these questions together starting with who with who I have Jesus obviously we have the demon possessed man we have the demons which is also known as legion we have the herdsmen and the city people now how about when and where well this was right after Jesus had calmed the storms remember when in the previous chapter in chapter 4 where they were crossing over the lake and Jesus had to calm the winds and the waves this was right after that so this is when they were approaching the other side of the lake as they were traveling across so we know that they were near the sea and it was mentioned of Jesarinus which was populated by the Gentiles so now let's look at what what was going on here so Jesus had crossed over to the other side of the sea, which was the end of the sailing trip from chapter 4, as I mentioned before. Once on shore, a demon-possessed man came up to Jesus. This man had been living in the tombs and in the caves outside of the city. This man had become so strong that when the people and possibly his relatives tried to confine this man with chains, he would break free from them. Because of his behavior, that could potentially bring harm to others. He was an outcast. So he lived among the dead. He lived among the tombs and the caves. He was possessed by demons. Now demon possession is when a demonic spirit resides in a human being. They want to inhabit human bodies for the sole purpose to attack God or to use us as humans as a weapons against God. They attack man because they hate the image of God in man. This particular demon said that their name was Legion because there was many of them. A Roman Legion is 6,000 men. Not that there were 6,000 demons, but it was to emphasize that there was a lot of them. This tactic was an attempt to intimidate Jesus, but Jesus still has the power over all of them. So Jesus commanded them to leave the man, but instead of leaving, they asked permission to go into the pigs instead. And there was about 2,000 of them, as the scriptures have said. This is an odd request. Why the pigs? First of all, it shows that even though that these demons were strong, Jesus is stronger, and Jesus has the authority. Second, the enemy is going to steal, kill, and destroy what they can. So it's no difference here. Jesus granted the request. So they entered the pigs, which ran off the cliff and killed all of them. And where there are pigs, there are herdsmen, who, who had witnessed all of this event. And I'm sure they were very scared about this, because they would have been the ones blamed for the destruction of all these pigs. So instead of just standing there in awe, they, what did they do? They ran into the city to tell the people what had happened. Because again, they wanted to make sure everybody knew that it was not their fault that they lost 2,000 pigs. But the people from the city came, and they saw this man, the man that was demon-possessed, the man that they considered crazy, and, and he was sitting there completely healed. This scared the people so much that they asked Jesus to leave, which of course he did. This showed us evidence that Jesus will never force himself upon you or anyone else. But when they were leaving, the man had asked Jesus if he could go with him. And Jesus told him no because he was now commissioned to tell others about what God had done for him. He was the first Gentile to be healed. 
but also notice that he was the first one Jesus told to go tell everyone else about what he had done for him. So let's move on to some of the other questions. Now, why? Why was this being told to us? This is being told to us to show us Jesus' authority once again and to identify that Jesus is Lord even over the demons and even the demons recognize who he was. And how was this being demonstrated? Through these eyewitness accounts, from the eyewitness accounts of the not only the man that was healed, but of the disciples themselves who were able to see what Jesus was doing. And so they were the witnesses of what was going on. Now, I hope you have your own verse that spoke to you. The verse that spoke to me was verse 15, followed by verse 17. And it said, A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, and he was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were afraid. And the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. This is what stood out to me. You just now saw a man that you know is just absolutely crazy and out of his mind, sitting there just completely normal and is able to come back into the city and be part of the community again. Why would they be afraid? That was the question I, that, that stood out to me as I was reading this passage. But see, here they're seeing this man, and they knew that he was completely healed and normal. And the response is to ask Jesus to leave. Sometimes God may do something in your life or in the life of those around us, and it might actually scare us because we don't understand it. We have to be careful with how we respond to God's miracle working power. Even though we don't understand it, we cannot dismiss the miracle or dismiss the miracle worker. Jesus will never force himself onto anyone. Imagine the miracles he could have done for all of those people if they had just welcomed him into their city. Let us not become like these city people, but instead let us welcome Jesus into the city of our hearts and in our lives, even as as scary as it may seem at times. There is so much more that he can and will do with us if we allow him to. So today, as we read these scriptures, let's welcome Jesus into our hearts, into our homes, so he can do whatever it is that he desires to do with our lives, through us and through our families. And that's what I received out of the passage today. Now go back and look at your scripture. And what is it speaking to you now that we've kind of talked about some of the story of what's going on? Take a minute and write out a prayer and a journal your heart towards the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for revealing things to us through these scriptures, for speaking to our hearts and just showing us that you are ultimate authority over everything in this world, including over the demons. Lord, I pray that you never allow myself or anyone who's listening to become like the city people who become afraid of the things that you are doing and, and how you are moving in our lives. Lord, we want to welcome you into our, the city of our hearts. Lord, to be able to be within our homes, to have your way, to sh do, who show your miracles, and to have whatever it is that you want to do in and through our lives. Lord, we welcome you, and we say don't ever allow us to get to that place where we are so frightened or scared by the things that you're doing that we don't understand what it is that you are doing, that, Lord, that we will just surrender and submit our lives to you so that way you can have your way and have a place here. Lord, we thank you for this day and this opportunity, and we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I hope these podcasts and these episodes are able to help you learn and, and grow in your reading of the word of God and being able to understand and, and actually being able to, to have a takeaway 
from the word of God and, and being able to see where God is trying to speak to you through his scripture, because that is the goal of this podcast. If you would like, you can visit my website at candymckee.com and look for the particular episode, especially this one, Mark chapter five, verses one through 20. And just let me know what God is showing you or speaking to. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, when we complete our study of Mark chapter five, may God bless you and keep you.